This is a quick spoiler warning for The Expanse Season 3. You've been warned. Alrighty then, let's get started. On today's installment, we're doing a strategic review of the UN-MCR War featured heavily in Season 3 of The Expanse. We'll be skipping some character-centric aspects in favor of a macro look at the war itself. Also keep in mind this is a best guesstimate as with the given information from the show. Historically, the MCR and UN relations have swung back and forth between mutual cooperation and policing in the solar system to proxy conflicts in the outer solar system. Needless to say, the war was seen as inevitable by many, though one that each side was determined to win when fighting eventually broke out. To this end, the UNN, the space-borne arm of the UN's military, maintained by far the largest fleet in the solar system. Though aging and in a state of deep neglect, if only to keep the number of ships high, the MCRN, the MCR's own space-borne military, in contrast, focused on fewer, though considerably more powerful and modern vessels. Enjoying a ratio of 5 to 1, the UNN had ships spread throughout the solar system in several fleets with the two main ones being the UNN Home Fleet, with its AO being the Inner Solar System, and the UNN Jupiter Fleet, which was tasked with the defense of UN assets in the Jovian system. Loosely assigned to the Jupiter Fleet are the 3rd and 5th Fleets, which are roughly stationed around Jupiter. Speculatively, a UNN Saturn Fleet also existed as battles were said to have happened in the Saturnian system as well, 8th Fleet presumably. Major strategic locations included the Earth, Luna, and Bush shipyards for the UNN Home Fleet. Jupiter Fleet had major resources at Ganymede Station in joint operation with MCRN's own Jupiter Fleet. Saturn's Moon Titan speculatively held a sizable contingent as well, largely considered the furthest major population center in the system. The MCRN had to match the UNN with a lot fewer resources, fielding fewer fleets of their own. The MCRN only fielded their Home Fleet, Jupiter Fleet, Third Fleet under the Jupiter Fleet, and Saturn fleet respectively in their own planetary systems. Though thoroughly outnumbered, they held a considerable technological edge. Their own strategic locations included Mars and its moons for the MCR and home fleet, possibly including a series of five stealth missile platforms near Earth orbit. Along with joint operations at Ganymede Station with the UNN, the MCR and Jupiter fleet held a vital position at their close to shipyards. MCR and Saturn fleet likely held a foothold on Titan as well, in a joint op similar to Ganymede Station. So now that we have all the pieces on the board, it's game on. Barring other preceding events, the official incident that finally lit the fuse was an engagement between the joint forces of the two Jupiter fleets in orbit and on the surface of Ganymede. The battle caused massive casualties on both sides, with the MCRN's Jupiter fleet emerging victorious. It held onto the moon until the fleets clashed again and quickly followed by an official declaration of war by the UN. At this point, battles were raging across Saturn, Jupiter, and the belt with the UNN and MCR and Jupiter fleets busy at Ganymede. UNN 5th Fleet was sent to reinforce their 3rd Fleet, despite leaving part of the fleet behind to keep the MCRN's own 3rd Fleet engaged in combat, though at great cost. In a short time, UNN's 5-1 advantage had dropped to 3-1. In desperation, the UN managed to destroy the MCRN's first strike capability with precision attacks on their missile platforms. Though their plan wasn't entirely successful, leading to an MCRN missile vaporizing 2 million in South America. Fighting continued around the outer system, though the MCRN pulled back all remaining forces from their Saturn fleet to regroup at Callisto, with local MCRN fleets regrouping also. The UNN 8th fleet was hot on their tail, with 3rd and 5th fleet converging for a massive offensive. MCRN's 3rd fleet continued to press the attack on the UNN combined fleets, though at a great cost to themselves. In total, the UNN devoted 51 ships to counter the MCRN's 23 in an all-out battle for Callisto. An unexpected rerouting of the UNN Agatha King and the MCRN Hammurabi led their respective forces away from the Callisto shipyards to Io. Upon a mutiny of leadership over the Jupiter fleet and Agatha King herself, which revealed the corrupt origins of the conflict, the 51 UNN ships opened fire on one another. In the chaos, the MCRN ships under the command of the Hammurabi were told to cease fire until the UNN ships stopped combating each other and offered aid to any UNN ships that pledged to the ceasefire. Eventually this ended the hostilities with both nations coming back to the table to negotiate peace, given the evidence on how Sadavir Aaron Wright had instigated and started the war. In the commotion and chaos of having all the military vessels in the system being removed from policing duties to all-out war, left the door open for the OPA. 
they managed to seize a certain amount of sovereignty at critical locations such as Ceres Station and enough legitimate recognition to be allowed to field the OPAS Behemoth, the single largest mobile weapons platform in the solar system. And with that, we've completely reviewed the strategic picture of the UN-MCR war. If you would like to see another war conflict on a future installment, please comment below. Thanks for watching today's episode, hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe for more content, and remember, this was your first pass at the UN-MCR war.